Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI once again. This side, Asif Himnad. Now let's see a demo on the classification as I promised. In the last videos, we have seen what is machine learning and uh, what are the different types of machine learning and the recent video we have also discussed about the classification and the different examples of classification and we will be starting with the very small and simple example so that you guys can also implement okay so this is all about iris data set and the classification and it's a typical machine learning classification problem right uh, so what we need to do here there are three species of the flower that is setosa versicolor and virginica that, that's an iris flower right so we need to predict given three species of the flowers to the model train that model on given data and when any new flower is given find out which type that new flower falls into whether it is setosa versicolor and virginica definitely we won't be having photos here that's part of image recognition and feature extraction that's a part of deep learning we'll see that later in the deep learning series but for now let's focus only on the machine learning part right how do i get the data here so we have a data in the table okay in the numerical form definitely even if you extract the features in the computer vision when the image extraction happens it actually looks at the features and puts them into the numbers okay uh, this is what we are doing manually here for now we don't have the image extraction for now right so we have a data in the table where we have sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the class label as the column what do you mean by the sepal length so the lower part of the flower is called sepal so we have sepal length and the sepal width given and we also have the upper part which is called the petal right so this is petal length and petal width is given so if the sizes of the flowers petal and sepal length the measurements are given based on that the prior data is given so if it is sepal length is 5.1 sepal width is 3.5 petal length is this and petal width is this then this flower is a setosa so this data is given so this is supervised learning right so the measurements that is x column x values and the y values that is output is also given so we have a correct data already in supervised learning right answers are given already we need to find more right ones so in future when i receive new flower measurements i need to find out which class it belongs to setosa versicolor or virginica simple so what steps we are going to follow let me quickly tell you the steps it's very simple right we have already seen this prepare x and y x is your input y is your output supervised learning right we have right answers given you need to find more right one and once you prepare x and y next step is to choose which algorithm you want to use that is import machine learning algorithm okay so once you choose which algorithm you want to use you will train the machine learning model on the input right so you will be training your machine learning model right and this is called we have a simple method if you remember that is called model.fit right so once you initialize your algorithm then you'll be training this that is model.fit once the machine learning model is trained now your model is ready to predict based on the new input given okay so these are the simple four steps that we guys are following in machine learning also so that we can easily see the demos easily see the examples on it right so this is super easy okay so, this, so these are the four steps that we follow right other than this we are gonna also see a model dot score so that i can check what is the accuracy of my model whether it is uh, 90 percent 92 95 whatever okay so let's jump on the demo please focus only on the cells which i'm executing okay so this is the first cell that i want to execute i use shift enter to execute these cells okay so what we are doing here ignoring warnings importing panda matplotlib and seaborn okay so these are the three data science libraries which are required to plot the data to find out the insights of the data so that i can understand what type of what is the nature of the data right based on that i can take the decision which algorithm i should use which algorithm is the best fit okay we have discussed this already so i don't waste my time here this data is already we have in the csv format right i kept it in some directory i am reading that data so this is how the data looks like and iris dot head so this is iris is our data and i'm reading only the head that means first five rows right so you can see sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the class of that flower 
going ahead. So what I did here, I have got data frame, right? If you don't know about basic data science Python libraries, I urge you to understand pandas, matplotlib, seaborn, numpy. So these are four basic Python libraries that everyone must understand, right? Iris variable is a data frame here so that I can perform operations on the table. Okay. Now, once I have the data frame, let's see what are the total counts I have. I mean, how many different types of flowers I have. I have 50 setosa, 50 versicolor and 50 virginic. I mean, we have 150 rows here and all are of type integer and we are doing the count on the species only. Okay. So I just wanted to understand if the data is not biased. Yes. And data is not biased. We have 50, 50 each. So let's train our model and use logistic regression here. Yeah. But before doing that, you know, I just want to see how does my data looks like? So because there are three types, there are three classes, right? And how do they look like? So to see how does the data look like? I'm using a scatter plot here. And this is the part of Seaborn library. If you check, we have imported Seaborn as SNS. So I'm using SNS.facetGrid. I raise the data frame and I'm using map function here to plot petal length and sepal width here. So you can choose whichever columns you want to highlight here, right? We can visualize, we can plot only two columns, right? So for now, just for understanding purpose, how does the data look like? I am plotting this data on petal length and sepal width. You decide on which you want to plot, okay? So you can see there is a simple classification available, right? Blue ones are separated. The orange and green are a little bit mixed with each other, but these can still be classified with the line, right? There will be outliers. There will never be a 100% accuracy, that's for sure. We'll get 100% accuracy for this blue, right? What is this blue? Setosa. For Setosa, we should get 100% accuracy that I can bet by just looking at the data because there is no mixing of blues into the other types, right? So I can see the legions. Blues are the Setosa. Versicolor is uh, orange. Virginica is the green one. There is a bit of a mix here in the Versicolor and Virginica. So I may not get the 100% accuracy for Versicolor and Virginica. But for Setosa, I'm damn sure that we should get. Okay, let's see how it goes. Now what next? So machine learning doesn't understand these words, right? So we will map these words that is Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica into the numbers that is classes, class zero, class one, class two. And these numbers are nothing but Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica. Okay, so let's map this by using map function here. Iris species column, map it to flower map. Flower mapping is nothing but this dictionary. Okay, so mapping is done. So now I have a new column ready with zero, one and two. Okay, so finally I have X and Y ready here. So this is the first step that we follow. Isn't it? Prepare your X and Y. X is iris data set that is data frame, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width values. I need values of these four columns. And what is your output? Y is your output. And what is the output? The species is the output, right? Data frame, species, values. Okay, so X and Y is prepared. What is the next step? Next step is import your algorithm. So we are using scikit-learn, import logistic regression. It's very simple. Once you import, then initialize, right? Model is equal to logistic regression, open, close, rounded bracket. So this is the default initialization for now. There are also some of the tuning parameters you can pass here, but let's keep that aside for now. We are initializing with the default values. So once you initialize, now we are good to go for the next step. That is to train the model and find out the accuracy or to predict the output for the new values. Okay, so to train, it's model.fit. It's that simple. So training happens behind this model.fit method, model.fit function, right? Unlike linear regression, when you do model.fit, it draws a line, but not to best fit, but to divide the data into two parts, right? So all that drawing of line and dividing that data into this different part is happening behind this, okay? Drawing a best division line, right? Division line here and division line maybe here, right? It will be done by machine learning so that when new data point comes, if it falls here, that means it will be a set of stuff. That's how it will be predicting the output for the new data set. Simple, amazing, right? Okay. Let me execute this. So my model is ready. Let me check the accuracy and how do we check the accuracy? We have a simple method called score, right? Model.score provide X and Y so that you can see what is the accuracy you have got. So it's 0.9733. That means we have 97% accuracy. 
okay though it is not the correct way to measure the accuracy of the model as we proceed in this series i will tell you how do we measure the accuracy and how can we make our machine learning model better and better and tune our machine learning model so that we get the better accuracy and reduce the noise okay but for now it's very simple right model dot fit model dot score and now let's do the predictions okay so to do the prediction what i'm doing here i have a simple method model dot predict and I'm passing X values. Though I'm passing same X values, let's see what is the prediction I will get for the same input which I have used for the training, right? This is the same input, right? I'm not giving any new input here, but the ideal scenario would be provide the new input so that you can get the actual predictions here. But for now, I don't have any new inputs. I'm going to give the same input which I have given during the training. That's again the X, okay? Now, let's see what is the prediction I'm gonna get here, okay? So the predicted is this for this given input. So for 150 data set, this is the output I have got. So if you remember, we have mapped our characters, that is classes, setosa, versicular, virginica into zeros and ones. That's why I'm getting output in this way. By looking at this, we don't really understand, right? So what exactly happened here? whether it is correctly predicted, whether it is not predicted, right? So to understand this output or a prediction in a better way, I have something better matrices that is called confusion matrix. It will give us the insights of the predictions, okay? For that, I'm using sklearn matrices, okay? So let's import matrix. I'm printing the matrix report expected and predicted here. Expected is nothing but your Y is actual output against the actual output what is your prediction that is what i have given here expected and predicted okay let's execute this if you see i have got something called precision recall f1 score right so this is a better way to measure your accuracy okay rather than score you just understand 97 percent of accuracy you have got but you don't really see the insights of the predictions right by looking at this you can understand that for zero that is for the setosa class you have precision one recall one and f1 score one that means you got 100 percent accuracy do you remember i told you just by looking at the data it's very easy to classify the setosa flowers right if you draw a line here it is very easy to classify this right there will not be any confusion here at all but we will have some outliers here we'll have a confusion here because there is a mix between these two types versicolor and virginica measurements right let's see that what the precision recall and f1 score says for the class zero that is setosa it is 100 percent for class one versicolor we have 98 percent precision 94 percent recall and 96 percent f1 score what do you mean by precision recall f1 score we'll understand uh, maybe in some other videos but for now you can just say that these are the better ways to calculate the accuracy all right then for second type for the class 2 virginica we have 94 percent precision 98 percent recall and 96 percent f1 scores so people will look at the f1 score in general right for now just to understand you can say that f1 score is a average of precision and recall so people will always ask you for what is the f1 score of your model okay f1 score is a better measure for accuracy f1 score for setosa type is 100 percent for versicolor is 96 and virginica is 96 again okay and this f1 score is derived from precision and recall only it is always better to give the models accuracy as f1 score okay this is what the f1 score stands for great i hope you understood this we're going to talk about the precision recall f1 score and even the math behind this logistic regression in the other videos so let's keep that part aside for now I have one more measure to understand the output, the prediction that is called confusion matrix. Once you import matrix, you have classification report and you also have a confusion matrix, right? So matrix dot confusion matrix expected and predicted. Okay, let's execute this. What do I get? So I got the matrix here. What I see 50, 0, 0. 50 means if you remember how many data points we had, we had 50 classes each, right? setosa 50 versicolor 50 and virginica 50 so 50 out of 50 predicted correctly for setosa that's what i understand from here 50 0 0 no wrong predictions okay for virginica i can see 47 are correctly classified right whereas three are classified as virginica so machine has predicted 47 correct versicolor three versicolor are classified as virginica which is wrong 
What about this? If you see here, zero are classified as setosa, one is classified as versicolor, right? Whereas 49 are classified as virginica. So 49 means there are correct 49 data points classified as virginica. Only one is wrongly classified. So by looking at this, there is a 100% prediction for setosa and there is a very bad prediction for second type that is versicolor. And even there is a good prediction for versicolor. Simple, right? So this is how I can understand what is the prediction that I have got by looking at the confusion matrix. I hope you understand this, right? So this takes some time to understand how to read it. But slowly as we proceed in the series and we see more and more examples, you will become more comfortable. Trust me. Okay, I think we are good here. In the next video, we'll talk about how can we fine tune this, how can we regularize this, which is to improve the model's accuracy more. But for now, we'll stop here. I hope you love our content and you're getting some value out of this content. Make sure to like, subscribe and share with your friends. Okay, so that's it for this video. See you in the next. Thank you.